Good morning, children. Welcome back. Everybody can get out their workbook. It's the book without the smiley face. Get your workbook out and see if you can find this page here. We have a new letter today. The letter we have is another vowel. Remember, we've talked a lot about vowels. A, E, I, O, and U are the vowels. And which one of the vowels is this? Who wants to guess? Whenever you know it, you can say it. U, good job. It's the U. And what sound does the U make? Does anybody know? Anybody know what sound the U makes? Uh, the U says, uh. Before we go into the U, and talking about that, let's review a little bit. Who remembers what the last letter was we had? The last time it would have been on Wednesday. Does anybody remember what that letter was? I'm thinking it was... Remember, uppercase, lowercase, the R. And what sound does the R make? Remember, everybody? Rrr, rrr. The R says rrr, as in rat. Let's say rat together, and everybody listen to that beginning sound. Are you ready? Rat. Hear that beginning R sound? Let's try another one. Let's try mm, rainbow. Rainbow. All together, you ready? Rainbow. Rainbow. Hear that beginning R sound? That's the R. Uppercase R, lowercase R. And today we have the U. Now what are some words that you can think of that start with the U sound? Uh, there's not a whole bunch of words, but there's a few. Let's just start on our page and we'll probably learn some of those. Is everybody ready to start on this page here? Let's start at the top. The first picture right here. Everybody know what that is? It keeps the rain off of us. Umbrella. Let's say it together. Are you ready? Umbrella. Hear that U sound at the beginning? Everybody got your pencils out. You can circle that very first letter in umbrella, the U. Circle the U. And let's listen to it one more time. Uh, umbrella. Hear that uh sound in umbrella? Circle the U and we'll go on to the next one. That's a little boy under his desk. I'm not sure what he's doing under there, but the word is under. Let's listen to that word. Uh, under. Hear that uh sound? Under. So you can go ahead and circle the U in under. For those of you that don't know, you can look right up here. Under. The next one is up, U-P, up. See the little boy pointing up in the sky? Let's say that word together, are you ready? Up, up. Hear the uh sound in up? Go ahead and circle that U. The next one down, everybody ready to go on? There's a little boy sitting on the couch. Oh, and it looks like he's tripping his big brother. And the word there is unkind. Let's listen to that word. Uh, unkind. Hear that uh sound? Uh, unkind. So circle the U in unkind. And then the next one, we have two children, a boy and a girl. 
And the word there is unhappy. The uh in unhappy. Let's say it together. You ready? Unhappy. Uh, hear that uh sound at the beginning of unhappy? And the last one is that little boy standing on his head. And the word is upside down. The little boy is upside down. Let's listen to that word. Upside down. Uh, hear the uh sound in upside down, the u sound? Go ahead and circle the u's there. There's one in upside down. I'm not sure if I told you, circle the one in unhappy also. And then the poem in the middle of the page. Under my umbrella, I stay very dry, while rain falls so softly from out of the sky. Umbrella. Everybody have that page done? Whenever you're done, you can turn your book over to this page to the next page. And we'll talk about this page a little bit. Um, why don't we talk about these letters first? The first letter we have, if everybody wants to put your finger right here on the lowercase r, and r makes the r sound. The next one down is the one we had today, is the u, makes the f. The next one down is another vowel, is an i, and remember what the I says, I, and the J, the last one is the J, and J says ch, j, j. So starting back up at the top, let's just do the sounds. R, A, I, J. One more time. R, A, I, J. Okay. So these are the lowercase letters and these are the uppercase. So you got to look at the first picture upside down and that's an easy one because it's the one we had today. So draw a picture from the little boy that's upside down to the lowercase letter over here and its uppercase letter over here. Everybody got that? If you draw the line to the U, the lowercase U is right here, and the uppercase U is up at the top on this side. If you draw the line there, you got it right. We're going to do the next one together, and then the last two I'll let you do by yourself. This is a rainbow. Let's listen to that word. Let's say it together. Are you ready? R rainbow. One more time. R rainbow. Hear that beginning sound? R Which one of these letters makes the R sound? Which one do you think? Whenever you know, draw a line to it. Good job. If you draw the line to the uppercase R here and the lowercase R on this side, it's these two letters. You got it right. Rainbow starts with the R sound. And the last two, I'm going to let you do all by yourself. This one is a J, Jeep. And the last one is an I, Igloo. Draw a line to the letter that makes the J sound for Jeep, J, and the I sound for Igloo. You got it? Whenever you got it, you can start seeing if you can figure out what these words at the bottom of the page say. See if you can sound those words out. There's a picture there that goes with each of them, so that makes it a little bit easier. Let's start with this one. R 
U, and the U is the letter we had today, R U G. Now we know the R, we just talked about it. It says R, and the U, we talked about it today. It says A, uh, and the G, G, G. So when you put those three sounds together, what do you get? R, A, G, R, A, G. Say it all together really fast, and what do you get? Rug. 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 See how that works? Let's go over to this next one and see if we can figure that out. The first letter is an S, and S's make the S sound. The next letter is the one we had today is the U. The U says a, uh, and the last one is the N, and N say N. So when you put them all together, s, a, n, s, a, n, s, a, n. Do you know what it is? Sun. And there's a picture of the sun. Good job. Now I did something here on paper. I don't know. We've not done this yet, and it might be a little bit too hard for you. I don't know, but we're going to try it. Let me see where I can get comfortable. We've had four of the vowels. We've had A, I, O, and U. The A says A, I says I, O says A, and U says A. Now this is something that Kenzie and Kayla and Tanya and Tiffany done. And they thought they'd done it in kindergarten. They said they had a whole lot of fun with it. So we're going to try it. T-A. We're going to put the T with each one of these vowels. It's the T-A and then the T-I and then the T-O and then the T-U. And we're going to say that. Are you ready? T-T-A. T, ta, and ta. Is that easy or is that kind of hard? A says a, I says i, o says a, and u says a, uh, and the t says t. So when you put a ta together, it's t, ta. A ti is t, to is ta, and tu is ta. How about that? Let's do it together again. Ta, ti, ta, ta. Let's do it one more time, a little bit faster. Ta, ti, ta, ta. Again, ta, ti, ta, ta. See how easy that is? And then if you put the S in front of the A, I, O, and U, it's sa, si, sa, sa. S makes the s sound. S A is sa, s i, s a, and sa. Let's say them all. Let's say them together. Are you ready? Sa, si, sa, sa. Again, sa, si, sa, sa. Faster. Sa, si, sa, sa. Sa, si, sa, sa. Let's go to the M. If you put the M in front of the A, I, O, and U, it's M, A is ma, mi, ma, and ma. Ma, mi, ma, ma. Is that too hard for you children? It could be you could have your parents write some of these combinations down and you could just work on them. Work on saying them. Let's go back to the T. I think it's the easiest one. T-A is ta, T-I is t, T-O is ta, and T-U is ta. Hear the difference? Ta, t, ta, ta. I think we're gonna start going over these every day. Um, let's
Let's go, let's do the T's one more time. Tap, all together. Everybody's gotta help me this time, okay? You ready? Ta, ti, ta, ta. This side, sa, si, sa, sa. Ma, mi, ma, ma. Ra, ri, ra, ra. That's putting two sounds together. That's enough of that. We'll practice more on that later. Let's go ahead and turn your page. Turn to this page. Up at the top, you have the uppercase U and the lowercase U. And the U makes the uh sound. Remember that, it's a vowel and it says uh, like upside down. So put your name on the top line and then you get to trace these U's. It's kind of far from that chalkboard it's kind of hard for you to see, so I'm just going to let you try to figure this one out. If you need help, you can ask your mom. Start at the dotted line. Just make a little loop and back down to the solid line. It's pretty easy. You can kind of look off of this little diagram here. Start where the one is at the top of the arrow. Go around. Make a loop. Remember, don't go above the dotted line here and don't go below the solid line down here. Kind of keep them inside the lines. You get to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get to trace eight of them and then you get to make four all on your own. And then the bottom line, we're gonna let that open and I give you sounds and you write the letters just like we did all the other days. And while you're doing that, I will read you your story again, I think. Our story time is, you can go ahead and keep working on your use while you're listening if you want to. Our story time goes along again with the memory verse that we're trying to learn, Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you remember when we had the story called Heavenly Treasures where Katie asked Grandpa about laying up treasures in heaven? Remember that story? Today's story kind of goes along with that and it tells you a little more about Katie. So while you're doing your use, I will go ahead and read you this story. What can I do today, wondered five-year-old Katie? I'd like to lay up some treasures in heaven. I wonder what that special book looks like where God writes down all our treasures. A few days before, Katie's grandpa had explained how she could lay up treasures in heaven. He said if Katie did good deeds because she loved God, he would keep track of each one up in heaven. Katie called Mama, please come and wash the dishes. Katie frowned. I don't like that job. Maybe if I don't answer, Mama will do them. Oh dear, do any of you girls ever say stuff like that? Carrie, do you say anything like that? Paige, is Shanika, does anybody act like that at home? Let's see what Katie figured out here. Katie called Mama. Oh, Katie called Mama. Please come and wash the dishes. Katie frowned. I don't like that job. Maybe if I don't answer, Mama will do them. Katie, do you hear me? Mama's voice was much closer now. I'm coming, but I don't like that job, pouted Katie. But Katie, I thought you wanted to lay up treasures in heaven, said Mama, coming into the living room. Oh, I do. I've been thinking ever so hard what I might do for poor sick Mary. I miss her so much. If I did something kind for her, wouldn't I be laying up treasures in heaven, asked Katie. Yes, that's one way. But do you think God would be pleased with your good deeds if you hadn't learned to cheerfully help at home, Mama asked. Even a job like washing the dishes becomes a treasure if you do it because you want to please Jesus. 
Washing dishes isn't nearly as excited as cheering Mary. But I do want to please Jesus, so I'll come right away, agreed Katie. Katie sang as she washed the dishes. She smiled. I wonder if Jesus is busy writing down my treasure in his book. As the water gurgled out the drain and Katie's dishcloth was hung to dry, Mama said, Katie, you may clip 12 flowers for Mary. She will like that. Then you may go over to Grandpa's apartment for a short visit. Oh, goody, cried Katie, Katie hurrying to the garden with the clippers. Mary's mother met her at the door and exclaimed, Oh, Katie, did you bring Mary a bouquet? That is so very kind. I'll put them in a pretty vase right beside her bed. She'll be so pleased. I hope she'll soon be well enough to have visitors. Then you must come. I will, and I hope she'll feel better. I miss her very much, said Katie, brushing away a tear. Thank you for caring, Katie, said Mary's mother as she closed the door. As Katie entered her house, she could hear Grandpa's old typewriter making the usual loud sound of one clack at a time. She skipped back to the hallway to her Grandpa's apartment and asked, May I come in, Grandpa? Yes, for a little while. Stand here beside my rocker, invited Grandpa. Katie stood quietly, watching intently as Grandpa labored over his typing with his heavy typewriter and Bible on a piece of plywood which rested on the flat arm of his rocking chair. Grandpa grasped an unsharpened pencil with the eraser pointing down toward the keys. His hand was very shaky, but when he, but when he thought his arm, his aim was true, he would pounce down quickly, striking a key. There, that took care of one letter, but sometimes the pencil would slip between the keys. Then he'd patiently pull it out and try again. It looked so slow and difficult to Katie. Grandpa, Katie finally asked, why don't you type with your fingers? You know, with both hands. I never learned the proper way, explained Grandpa. And Katie, maybe you hadn't noticed, but for the last few years, my hands and head shake badly. I can't even read a paper when I hold it in my hand because of the shaking. I can't do any handwriting. So this typewriter is the only thing that makes it possible for me to write. It's difficult, but I thank God for this typewriter. Grandpa smiled at his eager listener. But Grandpa, if you can't read, how can you teach the men's Sunday school class every Sunday, asked Katie. If I lay my Bible and lesson book on something solid like the speaker stand, I get along quite well. Any more questions before I get back to work? Why do you work so hard, Grandpa? Is it real important? Yes, Katie, explained Grandpa soberly. I'm writing some gospel tracts to help people love God. Admiration for Grandpa filled Katie's heart. She placed her little hand on Grandpa's arm as a new thought lit up her face, and she said, Why, Grandpa, you're laying up treasures in heaven when you teach that class and write tracts, aren't you? Grandpa's voice trembled as he spoke. I hadn't thought about it, but yes, I suppose I am, for I do these things because I love God. Come, let's say our memory verse together. The old and young voices blended into one as they said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, was everybody listening to that story? We've got a few questions here that go along with that. Number one, when we do good deeds, we should do them for others as if we were doing them for God. What did Katie change? What job did Katie change her mind about and do cheerfully for Jesus?
What job was it, girls? It's kind of a job that gets kind of kind of old at home. We have to do it about every day. Washing dishes. Katie was kind of grumbling a little bit about washing those dishes. And then she remembered that doing dishes for her mom and not grumbling is like laying up treasures in heaven. Number two, how many flowers did Katie cut for Mary? Remember, mom sent her out to cut flowers. How many was it? 12. Good job. If you said 12, you got it right. How many fingers did Grandpa use to type? How many fingers did Grandpa use to type? Remember, his hands were shaky. None. He used a zero. He used the eraser of his pencil because he said he never learned to type right. He never learned to type the right way using both hands and your fingertips. He used the eraser of his pencil and just hit one at a time, really slow and shaky. Okay, let's say the memory verse together one more time. Let me see what our reference. Let's say it all together this time. Are you ready? It's Matthew 6, 21. Let's all together. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, 21. One more time. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, 21. Okay, good job. Is everybody done with this page? You got your U's all made. U says uh. Let's go down at the bottom, and I'm going to give you a sound. I'm going to get close to my phone so you can hear. And you write the letter that makes this sound. Are you ready? Everybody ready? You got your pencils? The first sound is like sailboat. Write the letter that makes that sound, that beginning sound. The next one, I'll give you a hint. It's a vowel, and it's the vowel that says, are you ready? Ah. The vowel that says, ah. The next one, another hint, it's another vowel, and it's the vowel that says ah. Ready for the next one? The next one is the, everybody ready? T, like tiny, hear that? sound? Write the letter that makes that sound. And the last one, everybody ready? We talked about it already today. It's r like r railroad track. R Robin? race car. Hear that beginning sound? Write the letter that makes that sound. When you got that done, you can turn to this page here. Has your mom started putting plants in little pots yet to go in her garden? These are little garden pots. You plant stuff in them. And it says, help mom plant flowers by reading the words on the pot. Then you may draw flowers in each pot and color the picture. So the first thing we have to do is read these words here that are on the pots. Let's start with 
Um, this one. Everybody ready? The first letter is P. Second letter is O. And the last letter is T. Now let's figure these sounds out. P says P. O says Ah. And T says T. P. Ah. What does that say? What word is on there? Pot. Can you sound that out? If you said pot, you got it right. This one here says pot. P-O-T. Because the P says P, the O says A, ah, and the T says T. When you put them all together, it's pot. You got that one? Let's go down to this one here, the one that starts with the D. D, I, G. What sound does the D make? It's the Debbie Duck letter. D, D, D. I says I, and G says G, G. When you put it all together, you get D. Ig -d. I'm not saying that right. Let me try again. D -ig. Can you figure that one out? It's something you do in your garden. Dig. D I G. Does that one make sense? D says D. I says I, so it's di, g, dig. That was a little bit harder. Let's try this one. N O T. N O T. What sound does the N make? N, N. O says ah. T says t. When you put it all together, it's n ah t. Not. 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 N O T says not. And the last one M U G. The M says M. Mm. U says a. Uh. G says g. g. Put them all together. Mug, mug, mug. Can you figure that one out? 